everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my weekly wrap up of August 30th, 2015. And August is almost over. <laughs> wow. So many things I didn't get done in August. Uh, but I did read books this past week. I read five books and I'm going to talk about most of them today. The first book that I read this week was the audiobook version of You're Never Weird on the Internet, Almost, by Felicia Day. Uh, this has been super popular right now. It sort of was just published and everyone's reading it. And I can see why. I jumped straight on that bandwagon and I'm glad I did. Confession time. I haven't followed Felicia Day's career all that much. I first saw her in Buffy. I watched the first couple seasons of The Guild. And I enjoyed her character story arc on Eureka, which is still one of my favorite geeky television shows of all time. But I, I didn't finish watching The Guild and I've never watched her Geek and Sundry uh, channel on YouTube. I am not into video games. I'm not into internet culture in the way that Felicia Day is, so I don't relate to her in any way on that level. Felicia Day was homeschooled as a kid, which I know something about. She also went to university at a young age, which I also know something about. And that's kind of where any similarities between us end. But I think what I am most liked about this book, outside of all the geekiness in the video games and everything, is she's a very intelligent woman. I mean, she double majored in math and music. She killed it. She's very driven. She's kind of neurotic, and she would also be the first person to tell you that it isn't really a healthy way that she approached a lot of that stuff, but it's her personality. I love seeing a woman put herself out there and say, hey, yeah, this is me, I'm smart, and nobody can tell me that I can't do these things that I love. I really like that. She also talks a lot about her mental health issues um, with depression and panic attacks around uh, the time that she started the guild and also when she ended the guild and was working on her Geek and Sundry company. And I also really appreciated her talking about those issues about finally having to recognize that there was something going on with her, that she needed help, and the process of picking up the pieces, putting her mental health back together, and then coming out stronger and healthier for that. I would definitely recommend this one. If, if you're interested in, in listening or reading uh, celebrity memoirs, this is, a, this is a good one. And I don't think you need to know a lot about Felicia Day to be interested in her personal story. The next book that I finished was The Water Knife by Paolo Bacigalupi, which is about... Um, a continual drought in the American Southwest in the near future that slowly leads to the states out west collapsing and people fighting over water rights. It's kind of scary. It's also kind of violent. I'm going to be doing a separate review of this since I get done filming this. I'm going to film the review and talk about it in more detail. It was good, but um, probably not for everybody. The next thing that I finished was A Trifle Dead by Livia Day. I heard about a Trifle Dead on Jane's channel. She did a review of it for her Mystery Monday series, and it was super cheap on Amazon, so I got that, and then I read it. It is like the definition of a cozy murder mystery uh, set in a kind of funky, smallish town where everybody knows each other and everyone's artsy. The main character's name is Tabitha. She runs a cafe. There's a ton of food in this book. You will want to run out and get cake in the middle of reading it. She's the daughter of a former like police chief, and the whole police force thinks that they need to take care of her because, you know, she's Darling's little girl. Yeah, her last name is literally Darling. This is a cozy mystery. And one day, uh, Tabitha and one of the uh, detectives discovers a dead body in the apartment of a like punk band that lives near where her cafe is, and they're trying to find this person called the Trapper, who is setting traps and catching people and sometimes they die and it has something to do with Tabitha. There's also a lot of romantic interests in there. Um, Tabitha is interested in two different guys and there's snogging. I, that word sounds so wrong. There's snogging and pashing, which I have never heard of before. It sounds like people smushing their genitals together, but it's actually kissing as far as I can tell. Um, so this was light and fun. I didn't think too hard while I was reading it, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. 
for what it was. And if you are interested in cozy mysteries, I would recommend this one. I may continue with the series. There's a short story and a second installment in the series out. And if the price ever comes down, like on a sale on Amazon, I will read them. The last two books that I read this week were by Ursula K. Le Guin. The first was a reread of The Word for World is Forest, which <laughs> when I read this as a kid, I did not know or understand at all that this was kind of about the Vietnam War. It is definitely about colonialization and exploitation of natives. And it was harder to read as an adult because I was, I understood much more what was going on and I was getting very mad about it. I was getting very upset about it. It was about humans from Earth come to a world, I think they call it World 41, it has another name, and they are using it for lumber. There are basically no more trees on Earth and wood is a precious resource so they are cutting down all the trees. The thing is that there are a native indigenous people who are also of human stock, of Hainish stock, I think, uh, living on this planet. They are sentient, they are people, they're called Athshians, and humans basically round them up and use them as slaves and don't consider them to be people, even though the Athshians behave towards the humans as if they are also people. And in the middle of this, as the Athshians are being so horribly mistreated, um, the Ansible is invented. It's the um, faster than light communication device from the Hainish universe. And it allows the people on this world to communicate back home with Earth and the newly created ecumen instantaneously instead of over a period of like 50 years. And it turns out that their directives and how that they are supposed to behave on this planet are just completely changed. And yet, certain humans, like Davidson, don't believe the messages. They decide to go try to eradicate the Athshians. And on the Athshian side, there is um, a man named Selver, who they call a god, who discovers essentially how to murder because the Athshians never had this concept of murder or just killing before but he is pushed to that point of discovering it and of fighting back against the humans. I don't have a really intelligent critique of this book to share with you guys. I just enjoyed it. I'm really glad I reread it and understood it a lot better. And if you want to know more about it, I would suggest going and watching Bree's video about this book, which she just um, uploaded for her new series. I thought it was a very interesting video. It tells you more about this. So it's classic Le Guin right here. The last thing that I finished this week was The Unreal and the Real Volume 2, Outer Space, Inner Lands, which is the second volume of her selected stories. I liked everything about the stories in the second volume more than the first volume. Um, there were some stories that were pretty dark, like The Wild Girls. I didn't like it because it was so dark and depressing. There are also some stories like The Matter of Segri and Solitude, I think it was called, which kind of, they're almost about reverse sexism. They're about worlds where women are the majority or women are in charge and men are not, and the sexes are kind of almost physically completely segregated from each other. And it's, they're also hard to read, but they say something about sexism and sexual politics and so on. They were very interesting to read. I think that the best story in this is one of the very last ones. It's called Soar. It's about a, an all-female expedition to the South Pole that makes it there before men do. And they leave absolutely no trace. They talk to no one about this. Not, practically not even in their own families. And I think that story was saying so much about the differences between men and women. It's a feminine approach to exploration that is not destructive or exploitative or about proving one's masculinity or one's personhood. I was trying really hard not to cry near the end of the story because it was just driving home to me how much about women's history has been completely lost. Women just don't talk about some things we do because some man is going to come along and do the exact same thing and get, get the credit. And it's, sometimes you feel like it's not even worth saying that you did something because no one is going to listen. No one is going to remember it. It's going to only be remembered if a man does it. 
and it's depressing and real, but there's also something kind of beautiful about this story. I really liked it. It's not a black and white story. I might be making it sound like a black and white story, but it is not. And I would really recommend reading that story. It's probably my favorite story by Le Guin. Those are all the things that I read this past week. I am currently rereading The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. More on this once I've finished it, but at this rate, about a quarter of the way through it, I'm not liking this story very much, and I gotta think about why. I'm not sure I know why I don't like it. I'm also reading The Girls at the Kingfisher Club by Genevieve Valentine. Uh, this is a roaring 1920s Prohibition era retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses story, which is a really interesting concept. I love that premise. But I don't really like the writing style all that much. It has a bunch of parenthetical insertions that really ruin the flow of the story for me. It just makes it feel really choppy and disjointed to me. So I'll finish it. It's pretty fast to read, and then I'll see how much I actually like the story. That is it from me this week. I hope you're having an excellent weekend. I'm really enjoying mine, and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye.